Hello there fellows and welcome to another Tiger tutorial with Tigers RC. This time I've got something really special for you guys because on my channel I've just hit 50 subscribers. So I decided to pitch in the extra work and get this thing perfect. I've worked out all the kinks and now I'm proud to present to you guys the most efficient witch farm that exists in the world of Minecraft. It's capable of producing as of Minecraft version 1.8.1 up to 8,100 items per hour. So let's get on with the explanation for this and the tutorial. All right, fellows, in order to understand the witch farm that I've made for you today, you're gonna have to understand a few other things. First of all, the mob spawn algorithm. As of Minecraft version 1.8, it works something like this. Minecraft would choose a random air block somewhere in the world. Then it would go from that air block and go somewhere in a 5x5 radius, I believe. Something like that. And it would choose another block. It would check what mobs could spawn on that block. And then, around that block, it would choose random other blocks and it would spawn those mobs. In Minecraft version 1.8.1, it was changed ever so slightly so that Minecraft wouldn't choose an air block, but any non-solid block or air block. This means that mobs can now spawn if there is an entire field of roses or glass. You can still have one block that a mob can spawn on. This makes redstone able to be much more compact and still allow a perfect spawn floor. What I mean by perfect spawn floor is that all of the blocks on the same height level as the place where you want the mobs to spawn are non-solid or air. They used to have to all be air, but now because of the changes to this algorithm, they can be non-solid, allowing you to put redstone, upside down half slabs, hoppers, leaves, and many other things on that same height level. This makes the farm able to be much more compact and versatile. The next thing you'll have to understand are bud switches. Now, a bud switch is a piston that is being powered or is not being powered, but acts like the opposite. It does this because a piston is powered not only by the blocks adjacent to it, but also by the blocks that are one block above it. So not only is it powered by the blocks adjacent to the actual piston, it's also powered by any blocks adjacent to the air block above that piston. So if there was a power source right here, like there is on this one, this piston can be powered. But if you destroy that power source, the piston still acts like it's powered until it gets a block update, like that. The exact opposite thing works with this piston as well, because it's actually being powered. You can give it a block update and it will extend. This is the basis of what makes the farm so fast, because it uses one of these so that the piston can fire immediately when the farm is activated. The next thing you'll have to understand is that in Minecraft version 1.8.1, the witch huts got a little bit bigger. So whereas before they stopped right here and you could only fit two spawn platforms, now you can fit three as shown right here. This means that if the farm is compact enough, you can make it far, far more efficient with a third more spawn area. So let's go ahead and show off the basic design of the farm. This right here is basically what powers the farm. All that it is is an instant bud switch so that as soon as a witch spawns, the floor activates. You can see as soon as this witch appears, that piston right here extends and retracts. This is done by a bud switch because when this tripwire gets activated, it powers this redstone and this redstone, which updates this piston and powers it, which pushes it over here, which immediately updates this piston, and it is being powered by this redstone block. So it extends. One tick later, 
this redstone torch goes out, unpowering this redstone, this piston, moving the redstone block out of the way. This piston is ex still extending at the time, and so it updates this piston, which immediately retracts. That probably sounded like a bunch of mumbo jumbo to you, you all, but hey, it works. It updates immediately, and then the next thing you have to do is push the spawn floor back over three ticks later. So you may be wondering why the farm is so big at this point. Doesn't it seem like it would only have to be this small bit over here and this small bit over here in order to make it that efficient? The response to that is yes, sort of. Although you can see this is incredibly quick and a witch that's even spawned all the way up here falls through instantly, it won't actually work for our purposes because in a witch farm, witches don't always spawn and then wait. They might spawn like this. And you can see that doesn't work because it already activated once, so it's not going to activate again. And all the witches have to get off of there before it resets. This means that if you get more than one witch in a row, it doesn't work. So what we have to do is hook up a clock to this. A clock that will pulse the floor back and forth as long as this is active. This right here is my final design. It still has this mechanism for the immediate piston action, allowing a witch to fall through without stopping, as well as a clock me mechanism to keep it moving while there are multiple witches. So let's go ahead and move on right to the tutorial. Alrighty, first things first, you've got to find yourself a witch hut. Make sure that it was spawned in in Minecraft version 1.8.1 and not anything before that. Otherwise, this farm will not work the way that it's intended. Once you've done this, go ahead and clear out the surrounding area of mob spawnable spots. In other words, light up all the caves and light up all the ground. Or you could alternatively cover it with half slabs or water. Whatever you choose to do, make sure that the only place that mobs can spawn is inside of this witch farm. Otherwise, you're going to get sadly small spawn rates. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and start the farm. First things first, you got to mark out your spawn platforms. You can do this by coming to the corner and going one air block below the porch, the block above the porch, two air blocks between, and the block above the roof. Go ahead and fill in these spawn platforms and delete the witch hut. You can make them out of upside down half slabs or solid blocks or pretty much anything you choose doesn't really matter just make sure that pistons can push it and mobs can spawn on it you should end up with something that looks about like this each of these platforms is seven blocks wide by nine blocks long and they used to be where your witch hut was first thing that you need to do now that you have these is come to the top corner go three blocks up and delete those two. Do this for all four of your corners. You'll use these later. Then along the top spawn platform, along the longer side, go ahead and every other block place another one of your spawn floor. Then opposite those, so you've got the longer ones going here, shorter ones right here, go ahead and place another one on the opposite side. So that that way you've got an eight long strip for each of these and they kind of mesh. Do the same for the middle platform, only on the shorter side, like that, so that they mesh. And you've got ten wide strips. And the same thing for the bottom platform on the longer side, but make sure that if you've got one right there on the top platform, 
you don't put one there on the bottom platform so that that way they completely overlap. Once you've got those in place, then you can actually start building the farm. Alright, come to a spot where you've got a block sticking out like this. Put a glass block on top of it and two glass blocks out from it. Then grab your sticky pistons, put one of them facing into those glass blocks and one of them underneath facing into those glass blocks. Slime block on the front of that one. Then grab some leaves, put them right in front, one block down, like that. Yes, these have to be leaves because they cannot be moved by the slime blocks and no mobs can spawn on them. Then grab some normal blocks, place them up like that, and two of them like that. One block up there, normal piston on the front there. Then underneath, go ahead and put a redstone comparator on an upside down half slab right there. Block it out of it and another upside down half slab right there with redstone dust on top. You're going to want to put a obsidian block on top right here just so that this slime block can't actually move this piston. Then grab your redstone blocks, put one of them right there, and put a sticky piston facing into it like that. Sticky piston facing out right here and a half slab right there. Now you can go ahead and arm the system by putting two redstone dust right there and a redstone torch on the back right now. This means that your system is actually armed and ready to go so if you activate this redstone dust it will push across. After you've armed your system, go ahead and come to this piston that's extended right now. Place two slime blocks and a redstone block. Go ahead and grab a piston that's normal, face it upwards, a sticky piston facing downwards with a redstone block on its face. Three blocks out the side this way and one on this side with redstone dust on top of these three and a repeater on two ticks right there facing into a block with an upside down half slab directly on top of it and redstone dust on those two. Then all that you have left to do is put half slabs on top of all of your redstone like this and on top of this piston torch and these two pieces of redstone as well. The last thing you'll want to do is grab your tripwire hooks and string right here and string it across to the other side. When you're done with this, make sure to double check everything and put half slabs wherever mobs can spawn, including on top of slime blocks and above all of your redstone. This just makes sure that all the mobs that will spawn, spawn inside the witch farm and not outside. Now then, opposite of wherever you've got one that's sticking out, you've got one that's pushed in, and wherever you've got one of those, go ahead and place a glass block like that and a leaf block like that with an air block between. Obsidian right there and a regular piston like so. Then underneath this, place an upside down half slab with a repeater uh, that's running out of a block that has another upside down half slab and another repeater that's running out of a block that has two redstone that's on two hoppers like this. These two redstone dust have to have blocks above them. That's running out of a block that is out of an upside down half slab that has a repeater on it that comes out of two more upside down half slabs with two more redstone dust as well as two normal blocks with two redstone dust like that. Please notice that these hoppers should be upside down half slabs wherever you're not on the top floor of your spawn mechanism. So if you're building it for this floor or this floor, 
those can be upside down half slabs. Next, go ahead and grab a block of redstone right there. Block on the other side, repeater on two ticks running into a block and an upside down half slab like that with a sticky piston facing downwards right there. Then go ahead and put a redstone block right there and two slime blocks like this with a block like that and a sticky piston facing into them. This is the basic mechanism. You can go ahead and grab your tripwire hooks and string and string it all the way across to the other side like so. Once you've done this you should see that it works and if you stand on the edge it will pulse back and forth. Now in order to finish it go ahead and put half slabs on top of all of these blocks and all of the redstone and grab some glowstone or torches or whatever you prefer a light source of some sort and put it on the end right here. Once that light source is there you can go ahead and spread it across all of the other slices as well. The next thing that you have to do is go ahead and repeat this process for all of your slices. So wherever there is one block that's sticking out, like this one, build this slice right here. So build it here and here and here and here and all of these ones as well, as well as the other two floors for a few times on each floor. Once you've done that for this one, and the same for this one, wherever there's one that's pushed in, then your witch farm is technically functional. Alrighty. After you've repeated that pattern over and over, you'll basically be done with the witch farm. There's only a few things left to do. First of all, you've got all of this area that's like this, but you don't want your witches to go there. so you should fill in any extra spots with glass. Make sure that you've got leaves next to wherever slime blocks would be in this area on the inside, but everything else should be glass, and you'll want to continue that glass all the way down to your collection area. The collection area is the next thing you'll have to do. Make sure that there are at least 28 air blocks between this block here, the bottom spawn floor, and where you kill your witches that will ensure that they die instantly. You'll probably want to put an iron golem down there as well as some sort of a hopper collection system. I do have a tutorial on one of those and I'll link it in the description. The last thing that you'll want to do is make sure that no extra light can get in here. That's where these blocks that you placed earlier come in. You can go ahead and cover up the entire spawn floor and from wherever there's each one of these blocks you'll want to go out 15 blocks in both of those two directions and fill in that area just like I've done over here on these two like this that prevents any unnecessary sunlight from getting inside of your farm and makes it so that it works at maximum efficiency all the time. Once you've completed that and gotten all of your area filled in so that no sunlight can get in there, you've made your collection area and made sure that no witches can walk out of the farm, your farm is complete. That's all that you have to do. Alrighty fellows, I think that's all that I've got for you this time. I really do hope you've enjoyed and found this useful. I certainly had a ton of fun making it and I hope you guys have a ton of fun using it. So thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you've enjoyed. If you have any questions or concerns, post it down in the comments and I'll get to you as soon as I can. And yeah, until next time fellows, so long.